Welcome back to Let's Code. Today, we are working on our 2D platformer again. In this case, what I've done is I've taken all of the sprites for the character out as we start to work on the actual movement mechanics that we're going to include in our 2D platformer. So today, the only movement that we're going to be talking about is the left to right movement, so horizontal velocity. And you can kind of see how this works. If you move left and right, it accelerates to top speed and then decelerates as soon as you let go. And depending on how fast you're going, so for example, if you're going really fast in the opposite direction, you will get a bit of a speed boost to get you up to top speed going in the other direction. I find that this approach is giving me a nice, very responsive, like if I want to turn, if I want to stop moving in that direction, I get a very abrupt, very intentional movement out of my controls. And it, it fits what the player is trying to do significantly better, I think, than... Uh, the approach that I had previously. So if I make this a little bit smaller and we look at the logic in the back, the old way was when you hit left, set the velocity to you know 300 pixels left or something like that. The new way calculates the difference between the top speed, 300, against the intended amount of that speed. So if you have a controller, it'll be something like 150 if you're halfway, if you put a stick halfway to the left or something. We calculate the difference that we need to make up between where we are and where we need to be. So if I move right from a standstill, you can see that we get a diff to make up of 300. So we need to make up 300 speed in that direction. And then we have basically an algorithm where this uh, system is constantly running. And that will get us closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. And the changes will get smaller and smaller until you get to top speed, at which point it is not actually changing at all and you will just hold top speed. So I found that this is giving me quite a uh, nice horizontal movement to start the game off with. It's kind of like the very base of our movement system here. So I wanna make sure that we have that nice acceleration to top speed, no matter which direction we're going, no matter how fast we're going. If we are at top speed, I want to be able to maintain top speed. And then if we stop, I want it to decelerate fairly quickly so that the player stops when they mean to stop. We do use the leaf wing input manager here. So that's how we get these platformer actions. If we look at our actions, we can see that the defined inputs that somebody can give us get translated from any key press. So whether it's a keyboard or a controller or a D-pad or whatever it is, a joystick, that gets translated into right, left, up, down, and then one of these others, which allows us in our horizontal system, which runs all the time. So this horizontal system runs as fast as we can all the time. We query all of the action states, so all of the logical inputs, so platformer action left, platformer action right, which could have been triggered from a keyboard or a controller or whatever. We also get a query for the player. In this case, we have a player component on our player, so I query for the entity, the velocity, and the external force. Again, we're using rapier.rs for our physics library uh, and for our collision. So that's where velocity and external force come from. I also have time here, but we aren't currently using it. And I've also commented out all of the sprite related texture animation controls because I took the sprites out for now. So in this system, we query over all of the actions that are being sort of applied right now. Inside of each action, we query or we iterate over the player or the number of players. In this case, there's only ever one player. But since this system runs all the time, I'm looping over the player query rather than doing player.single so that this system doesn't panic when there isn't a player on the field. Basically, what this will do is it will loop over all of the actions if there are actions, but if there are no players, then the inner loop will not run. This also means that all of our inputs will get applied to all players that would be on the screen, theoretically, if we wanted to add a, kind of a mirror character or something like that, this would also work there. So we test for the action state, which will be either uh, platform action right, platform action left, or the fail through default case. If we currently have right pressed, then we calculate the new horizontal force and we apply that force using the external force component uh, from Rapier. And we set that exactly equal to the new horizontal force because what our calc force diff function here does is take our inputs and gives us back how much force we need to apply to get to top speed, right? So if we are at 300 and our top speed is 300, then we don't need any extra force to get 
to 300, right? We're just at 300 already and we don't want to go any faster. But if we're at zero, then we probably need something more like 300 to start off with to get us closer to that 300. And this will constantly update as uh, our systems run and as our player moves. So the faster our player goes, basically, the lower the force that we apply is up until the top speed where we apply zero. So the calc force diff takes the clamped value. So this is going to be a value from zero to one, whether it's in the left direction or the right direction. This number will represent the total percentage of the top speed that the player wants to maintain. So if you are on a controller and you are using a, a joystick, you could put your joystick at 50% to the right and you would maintain a speed of 150. We also pass in the linear X velocity. So we don't touch Y velocity at all in this system. We only touch X velocity. And we also pass in the target top speed. So this calc force diff is doing a lot of the heavyweight lifting for us. We take, in this case, the target velocity. So in the, for the right direction, for the positive direction, this would be 300. We multiply it by the clamped input, which is probably going to be one in the majority of cases, unless you have either an analog keyboard or you have a controller with a joystick. And that sets the target speed that we want to be able to reach and maintain without going over. We then subtract the current velocity, so the how fast we are currently going from the target speed, and that gives us how much speed we have to make up to get to our target speed. In this case, this is where I'm debugging that diff to make up. And we multiply that by some value to get the new force. So this value here is a multiplier on effectively how fast we're going to go from where we are to zero or to top speed, basically. So this is the behavior as it looks with the 2.0 acceleration value or the multiplier of 2.0. And then if we drag that way down to 0 0.2, you can see that we get a much slower acceleration, almost not even really ever reaching top speed in the amount of space that we have here. But we also don't use that for the deceleration. The deceleration down to zero is a different formula. We just take the, if the uh, linear velocity, the X component of the linear velocity is greater than 0 0.01, because these are F32s, then we set the new horizontal force to the negative of whatever speed we have, which should put us in the other direction. And we set that equal to the force. So if we are going 300 in the right direction, we'll get a negative 300 force, and that will bring us all the way down to zero. And then at zero, once we get to that point, we'll stop. So for me, I am pretty happy with the way that this turns out. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way that it stops when you want it to stop. I'm pretty happy with the way that it turns when you want it to turn. I think that the acceleration curve could probably be modified a little bit but for now i'm going to stick with this and then as we get into more complicated uh, movements so we're in the next video we'll probably add jumping back for example and then we have to add things like coyote time and other typical or expected 2d platformer mechanics but i think this gives us a good base to start from i think that the movement feels pretty good it feels like it's going where i want it to go it feels like it's stopping when i want it to like i didn't just run off the screen right there so i can stop it right before i hit something uh and that feels pretty consistent to me so i'm happy with that i just wanted to share a little bit of progress on the 2d platformer and then we will continue with more advanced mechanics have a great day